Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining our talk today about Harbor. So if you're not interested in Harbor, you're in the wrong session. All right, my name is Vadim Bauer. I'm one of the co-maintainers of uh, Harbor together with Yang Meng. And today we're gonna talk about Harbor. And specifically, we're gonna talk about some Harbor superpowers that you maybe already know of, maybe not. And then Yang Meng is gonna talk about some of the features that we developed in the last half year that are already available and that you can use. And he's gonna dive a bit into details of those features and we're gonna give an outlook about what to expect in, from Harbor in the next release. Uh, and then we'll close with uh, ways how you can collaborate with us and also pick up some t-shirts here. Uh, okay, so if you don't know it, Harbor, is a container registry, right? So it is existing since 2016, and it's uh, graduated from the uh, graduate project in the, in the CNCF. It is a registry to you know, store images on OCI artifacts, but more importantly, it is a container image management solution. So you really can manage the life cycle of your container images, which makes you know, Harbor somewhat special compared to a simple storage solution where you just storage images, right? So it has the policies, role-based access, control, vulnerability analytics, and uh, signing possibilities like notary and cosign. Um, over the years, Harbor has gained quite popularity, and I'm confident to say that Harbor is probably today one of the most popular and widely used container registry, specifically on-prem environments. In the cloud, it's a bit different, of course but on the on-prem or self-hosted, Harbor is the de facto standard. And I mean, don't take my words for, for that because I'm obviously biased, but this is, for example, what uh, Victor says about Harbor. Uh, this is what he says about Harbor in a, one of his YouTube episodes. So he knows what he, what he talk about. And as I said, like Harbor has a ton of features, right? So it has like access control, artifact distribution, security compliance. But you know, there's like old features, it's a bit difficult to, to understand what it actually does. So I'm gonna focus a bit on the superpowers of Harbor, and I picked up uh, three of those today for you. And one of the superpowers of Harbor is that it's remarkably well working for small teams, like you know, if you have a team of five, five people, three, four people, who needs, uh, or, you know, want to have a registry, it works equally well for small teams as well as for large enterprises, right? So for enterprises, of course, the features like robust access controls, IDP and SSO are de facto standard in the industry and they're available with Harbor. And you can use not only for authentication, but also for authorization. So you can do authorization and bring the authorization from your identity provider into Harbor and uh, use this for authenticate and authorize users on different projects. And I'm gonna show this quickly. Then the second superpower of Harbor is that Harbor makes CISOs happy. Now, how does it make CISOs happy? Because typically people use Harbor as a central registry, like they aggregate all the images in one registry. And this is of course very good for, or makes CISOs happy because everything is one place. It is transparent. If you know which images are used in your organization, you have like, like replications, proxying that you can you know, ingest out of registries, and you have an overview about vulnerabilities, and you can also hook in other scanning tools and, and, and security uh, tools into Harbor so that you can you know, do other things with the Harbor which are not, uh, you know, which we don't provide out of the box, so you can hook it quite easily. And then the third superpower is the, um, it's, it's ops people darling, right? Because it's, I mean, why is it ops people darling? Because it has automation, you can use REST API to automate Harbor, you can automate workflows with Harbor so you can collaborate in teams, you can use Terraform, you can use Pulumi to automate, not deployment itself of course, you know, this is obvious, but you can also use Terraform Pulumi to uh, uh, modify the configuration of Harbor, right? So you can use it for, you know, GitOps workflows for uh, your teams, and this is really powerful uh, functionality that you, you, you get out of the box, and this is why ops people love Harbor. And then there's operational controls, right? You, you have a 
advanced garbage collection, which is differs a bit from Docker distribution that we are using. Um, I mean, Harbor is based on Docker distribution, and we use Docker distribution underneath, but we have our own garbage collection, which has the power that it runs in, in an, can you know, run while your registry is operating. So you don't have to switch your registry in, in read-only mode like you do with Docker distribution. Uh, you have like the quotas and policies so that you can control your registry quite powerful. I'm, I'm just quickly showing what you can do with, uh, with Harbor. So I have here a, a demo instance of Harbor. Let me check if this is working. Exactly, so this is a demo instance. I can recommend you. Just go to demo.goharbor.io and you can log in there as an admin and harbor12345 is the password. It's really for demo purposes. That's why I can hand out the password here. And it gets, a lot of things get deleted after a while. So when we talk about the first superpower, the, uh, you know, this works for small teams and enterprises, you can select a project here. It's a project, it's a kind of a namespace. And then you can add members, you can use users, groups, and you can add those users and groups into, um, into Harbor and you know, assign them permissions. Uh, this is quite straightforward. This is, you know, works for small and, and larger teams. And then the, uh, the other functionality is the IDP. So the IDP is the way how you, uh, I cannot select it now because we have database enabled. I can just let me quickly just delete all the users. That's why it's a demo instance, right? And we can switch like the OIDC provider, for example. And then we can, of course, set all the IDC, OIDC settings. And here we can import our, uh, our groups, right? Admin group or user group, so that people, uh, users that you import from your IDP are automatically mapped to groups in Harbor. And so you can assign groups to projects and that, you know, automatically people, when they log in, are automatically in the right group with the right permissions and the right project, which is a quite powerful feature for, the, uh, for ops people to use. Then um, the CISO part, and Youngman is going to talk about this more in detail, but I'm just quickly showing that you have the possibility to have this uh, vulnerability overviews, right? So you have the possibility to view the vulnerabilities on a, on a project basis. Let's take a look at this one, for example. It's not scanned. Let's take this one. Yeah, this is a good project. Yeah, for example, you can see the vulnerabilities based on an image, and then you have also the other option to, to view vulnerabilities uh, uh, or images that contains vulnerabilities or um, other ways around. And yeah, the third option is a bit difficult to tell or to, to, to show because it's a mostly REST API based, and, but you have the possibility to use the, the garbage collection because that, so that your image is not getting out of control. And the, the quota and policies is, is something that you can, of course, as an ops person, you can respect who gets how much uh, data on your registry so that it's not, uh, you're not ending up in, in, in terabytes of data and you can run lean and efficiently. And these are basically the superpowers of, of Harbor. There are, of course, much more features, but I just wanted to focus on what I think are the unique functionalities of Harbor and what makes it stand out to other registries. And then in the next one, I'm handing over to uh, Youngman, and he will tell you more about the features of Harbor. Yep. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Andy. Hi. Um, yes, switched. This is uh, um, Yen from, uh, sorry, from Harbor team. Um, uh, currently, I'm uh, working at VMware, and I'm the maintainer of uh, Project Harbor and the Project uh, Distribution, and I'm currently uh, leading up uh, this project. So I'm gonna uh, share you about uh, what we have done in, in uh, 2009 and what I'm doing for the 2010 and what we'll do in the future. So um, the latest uh, Anchor features um, in the 2009 is regarding to the OCI. So some of you may already know that Harbor is an OCI compatible registry, so I feel like uh, to adopt the latest change of the upstream OCI and um, it's the top priority of, of us. So I can give you a little background uh, uh, regarding the OCI uh, spike. So originally Harbor was designed to uh, um, manage the Docker image uh, with the introduction of OCI, things got changed. So 
you can package any uh, um, files like uh, into uh, artifacts like uh, doc image, mchar, uh, spawn, text, and email videos. So Harbor is capable of managing those individual artifacts. And one step further, the OCI 101 allows you to establish the relationship between those individual artifacts. Um, so that means uh, um, you can associate any artifact to a subject manifest without alerting the subject manifest itself, like the figure shows. Um, you can approve your artifact security by adding elements like uh, signature, as well. So um, in addition to that, you can replicate those um, artifacts as a whole. That means the, the policy settings uh, you did in the Harbor A, uh, the, those settings still work in the Harbor B because that nothing was lost during replication. So, um, and what's more, uh, we, we had did, uh, some uh, collaboration with the OCI client team, like uh, uh, Nutation, namely uh, the Notary version 2. So to define some uh, security features, um, what, which I will show on the demo. So I will show you the, the demo uh, regarding the OCI. So um, I will try to firstly to uh, push a uh, demo artifact. So you will, uh, after refresh the, the harbor, you can see the, the uh, demo artifact. So then I will try to uh, enable the notation policy. Um, that means that uh, when you try to pull the image, if you do not have the signature of notation, you can pull that, you cannot pull that image. So here is the error message. The image is not signed by notation. So, so next, let's try to use a notation to sign this demo image. So after the, the after you use the notation to sign this, you will see a new signature be attached to the demo artifact. So after refresh, you can see the, the signature is attached to the demo subject. So then let's try to pull the demo artifact again. So you can see now it exceeds. So that means uh, we have a signature for this artifact. So in the next, I will try to use ours. Ours is an OCI client to push a uh, SBOM of the demo artifact to, here I, I add some annotations for my uh, SBOM artifact, and we should know that we are using the OCI 101 mode to push the SBOM. So, after we push to the, the JS file, you will see there are two attachments of demo artifact. So you can see the, after we go into the details, we can see the annotations that we uh, stack by the uh, CLI. So, um, so next, let's try to use mutation to sign this SBOM artifact. So uh, I will copy the, the digest of the SBOM, and then I, I will try to use mutation to sign this artifact. So after that, you will see there are third level of um, the whole bunch of uh, artifacts. So the, the last level of is the signature of the SBOM. So um, because that you can um, attach any kind of uh, artifact to your subject manifest. So here, I will try to upload a CVE export of this artifact to attach to the uh, demo. So the similar command, I define some annotations and use the OCI 101 mode and specify the subject manifest and the local file. So after light, you will see 
there are another one more accessory attached to the subject demo demo subject. So uh, you can see the um, um, annotation that I defined in the uh, command line. So next is the last step. I still can use notation to sign this CVE report to guarantee the security of uh, my uh, subject. So um, after pushing the, after signing the last subject, I will expand the whole structure of this subject. You will see uh, we have uh, three levels and two signatures, and one as bomb and one CVE as port. So last, I will use the our discover command to view the whole structure of demo artifact. So the output is tree mode. So we can see the result here. Um, the same graphic as the Harbor UI shows. So it's worth no noting that the Harbor and Auras do not customize anything for each other. We are simply coding based on the same specification. That is the OCS bike. So um, the next is the security hub. So we have already recognized that security remains a big concern within the commu Kubernetes community, especially when comes to the safety of artifacts. So we want to do some uh, enhancement from the perspective of the artifact registry. Harbor allows you to scan the CVE, scan your artifact, and establish the pool policies around this. But it lacks a comprehensive, centralized view um, of your for monitoring uh, the overall status of your uh, hardware instance and, and its associated artifacts. This is where the security harm comes in. Uh, with the security harm, you can achieve a more powerful approach to uh, uh, security. The security harm provides an overview dashboard, making it easier for you to define and conduct CVE search you can quickly identify how many artifacts are impacted by a specific CVE um, and who the owners are. So you can quickly notify the owner to fix and address the CVE as soon as possible. So why we name this as HERB is because that we would like to continue adding more security functionality to this central platform. So the CVE search is just the initial step in this jewelry. So besides the anchor features, we did a lot of enhancements in the 209. One such improvement is in the area of garbage collection. So you may know that uh, Harbor supports the single thread to remove the garbage from the backend storage. And uh, but we have received feedback from some of our users from community uh, who report that the performance was not up to their expectation with some taking days or even weeks to finish their garbage collection process. So now Harbor introduced multiple deletion. This allows you to specify the number of workers to handle the file deletion in, in parallel. Um, Another key point we have been focusing on is performance and stability. Many of our users rely on Harbor for their commercial needs and serve the contents for their customer. So in the last several releases, we continue to improve on the performance, especially on the uh, multiple uh, concurrency pooling and pushing. So I can show you some data. One of user report that their hardware instance can serve six million pools per hour. And another user uh, I met uh, on the last time uh, uh, Europe, Kobe Kang, 
they told me that in their harbor instance, their harbor instance has been running without, without any downtime for an entire year. So if you find yourself in a similar situation, we highly recommend you to upgrade to the latest patch. Um, here is the, uh, the demo regarding to the uh, security harm. I, I just uh, push uh, a radius and then try to use harbor to scan the radius. So after scanning, you will see uh, the, the CVE will be list into the details page of artifact. So now let's try to jump to the security hard page. So here you can see the overall status of CVE. Then um, you can see the most dangerous artifacts and the most dangerous CVE that you should care about. Um, so in the following uh, degree is the vulnerability search. So here you can customize several categories like CVE ID, severity, and in a degree we list all the required information of a severity, uh, of a, a vulnerability. So um, like you can select the radius, the CVE will be listed belongs to the CVE. You can also select with CVE ID. You can specify any ID you want. You will see the which artifact will be impacted. And also you can search with severity, means higher than the minimum. And last, you can search with score. So here I just specify the range from eight to 10. So then you can see all the results belongs to this range. So here is the overview of a security hard page. So you can uh, jump to the artifact by the link here also. So um, next, let's try to uh, remove the radius artifact and then art after remove it, I will try to execute a garbage collection. So um, like I mentioned earlier, we enable the multiple deletion. So here you can specify the worker count to do the multiple deletion in parallel. So after you specify the worker two, that means you, there are two workers are running in the backend to remove files. So um, there's another small uh, enhancement. That means uh, you can get the summary in the GC history degree to appoint how many artifacts and blobs were removed and how many space were freed up. And by clicking the, the log, you could see uh, there are two workers are running in parallel, and each worker has a unique identity. So you can see this from the log here. Um, so um, the multiple deletion will accelerate the, the GC execution, so you can try that. And so the last one is the binary message. So a lot of users from community ask us to that uh, we want to customize message to my user when I maintain my hardware instance. So here you can try to uh, 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 customize a message and the, the level of, of and the expiration time. So like uh, I, I just uh, said a hello to become and it, the manner is clickable. And you can also update the, the to an uh, info level and disable the clickable. So now you can just view the information, but you cannot delete, remove it. So this is quite useful for, for you to maintain your hardware instance. Okay, so what we are doing right now? Um, Robert, uh, full access. So 
it was one of the hottest topic in the community. The Rob account was originally designed to access our uh, Harbor APIs, but currently we only expose a small part of them, CC and Bidu. So given you still can leverage API to create a robot with customized scope site, it can quite challenge, especially for those who are not familiar with the Harbor API ecosystem because we have hundreds of uh, uh, endpoints. So to simplify this process, we have unified, refined the Harbor UI to add a friend, user-friendly tutorial that gets you through creating a new robot. You can just uh, specify uh, uh, um, the permission site as you like by a single click. So uh, I just have a quick demo here. Uh, when I try to create a, a project level robot, you, you should uh, firstly to specify some basic information and, oh sorry. So after that you can select the, the required permission in this step. So you can select or or you can customize any you want. So after that, you will finish the, the creation and you can see the scope in the dead grid. So the next, uh, I will try to uh, create a system level robot. So the difference here is that you have to select the scope for system and you can also select the scope for project. So after uh, specify the basic information, you can specify the uh, scope for system level. We have a lot of actions, we have a lot of resources, and you can customize any, anything you want. So, so after you select the system level, you will jump to the project level. So for this specific robot, if you want to cover all projects, just click that checkbox. But if you want to specify any specific project, just select that project and select the uh, permission. So this is the, the Robert full access. So this is the feature will be released in the coming release, that is 2.10. Um, so, um, plug both scanners back. So, um, you may already know that Harbor currently supports Trevi as a building scanner to detect CVEs. In theory, Harbor can actually have the capability to, to support any kind of third party scanners. How to do this? As a scanner, uh, uh, a developer, all you need to do is to implement a adapter based on the plugable scanner spec. The plugable scanner spec is, is the standardized behavior definition of a scanner. It defines how a scanner should interact with the hardware to finish the artifact scanning. So in our most uh, recent release, one or two, our goal is to enhance this uh, spec, making it more flexible to enable more capability of the scanners. So current we support a uh, vulnerability scan. So next is SBOM. The future should be the CIS and misconfiguration. So what about data? So um, the metadata. The metadata is the description of a scanner, include uh, capabilities. So, um, but the previous version was rather general. So in uh, 2001 or two, we uh, enhance the response to give more specific information like uh, uh, the scanner will tell, tell Harbor that I can um, scan vulnerability and I can scan a spot. So with the enhanced response, when Harbor issue a scanning request, it can specify the exact capability required for the scanner to execute. So in this example, Harbor issued a, a scanning request that included the both scanner, both CVE and the 
uh, both vulnerability and SVOM scanning. Um, let me talk about the uh, future. So this is a future flight. Um, so everything regarding safety of your uh, artifact is our top priority, I believe. So SBOM support is a key area that we wanna focus on. But please keep in mind that everything is still in the design phase and nothing is not fun finalized, but however, uh, I still wanted to share some basic idea with you. Um, firstly, we, we would like to leverage the Plapos scanner spec to work with the Trevi team to auto-generate the SBOM and attach the SBOM to the subject manifest as a kind of accessory. That I showed in the OCI 101 support. So next, we plan to integrate security hub with SBOM to provide more insights. Uh, for example, a user can, will be able to conduct a package or library search based on the SBOM content. And then, as, and now we are working closely with the Trevi team to enhance the image scanning performance. A less co collaboration will eliminate the need for a scanner to fetch the entire um, artifact, but just uh, the SBOM. You're not, you, you may know that the SBOM, the size of SBOM is KB, but uh, uh, the size of uh, artifact should, could be a gigabyte, yeah. So it can save uh, the time and save uh, IO traffic. And last, we wanted to define some policy around the content of SBOM, like uh, someone cannot pull any specific image with um, the open SSL, SSL version equals um, 1.0, for example. But um, again, everything is in the draft phase, so I'm happy to listen your requirement, your needs, and how would you like to see the integration? Um, so, uh, we are um, seeking a collaboration uh, contribution from community. And so if you love Harbor, if you have interest in the development of Harbor, so feel free to join me live through this um, method. You can ask questions in the Slack channel or, or you can join us at the, the community meeting. Um, thank you. That's all for me, thank you. Thank you. So, so as a closing remark, we have a few of the swag here, some T-shirts, some Harbor T-shirts, I think also a few cups. If you have questions, I mean, we are running out of time now. If you have questions, you can ask your questions and come to our booth. We have a booth at the project uh, section of the, in the, in the conference hall there. And you can come after now <laughs> to, the, to the booth and we can, you can place your, your questions there. We are there today afternoon and tomorrow uh, in the morning, right? Afternoon. Uh, afternoon as well, okay, yeah. So we are in the afternoons, we are there. You can come there and uh, we can chat with you and, and discuss your questions that you have regarding Harbor. Thank you very much. <laughs>